Hi, my name is Anna. I'm a research assistant at the Stress Psychiatry and Immunology Lab at King's College London. Today I'm going to show you how and why we measure cortisol in patients with depression. Cortisol is a stress hormone, so people typically think of cortisol as only being released in response to a stressor, causing a fight or flight reaction. However, cortisol also helps to regulate our daily energy, eating and sleeping patterns, as well as the function of our immune system, digestion and metabolism. Changes in cortisol levels can also influence how we respond to a stressor, including everything from social situations, watching the news, or even just waking up in the morning. In healthy individuals, cortisol levels typically peak 30 minutes after waking and then decline throughout the day. About 60% of patients with depression show increased cortisol production, which is associated with symptoms such as loss of appetite, mood variability from morning to evening, and insomnia. However, other patients with depression show decreased cortisol production, which is associated with symptoms like fatigue, increased need for sleep, and weight gain. In our lab, we are collecting cortisol samples from over 300 patients with depression to explore why some patients have higher or lower cortisol levels and how antidepressant medication might affect this. We measure cortisol using a technique called ELISA, which stands for enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Antibodies and enzymes are added to produce color changes in the cortisol samples so that the color intensity of the sample numerically correlates with the concentration of cortisol. This clinical study is part of a Wellcome Trust New Immunology Consortium, and the results are being presented at the British Association of Psychopharmacology Conference in July of this year. Depending on our results, it's possible that cortisol could be used as a biomarker to identify a subtype of depression or predict antidepressant response. To keep updated with the results of this study and our latest research, you can follow the Stress Psychiatry and Immunology Lab on Facebook and Twitter.